Today we're going to build this baby dresser. But actually, there's no reason it has to be a baby's dresser. I mean, it could be a man's dresser or a Santa dresser. But for us, it's a baby's dresser. I'm four eyes. So this project began pretty much the same way that they all do. It was summer. The Southern California sun was hot. I walked in the house after a hard day's work, covered in sweat and sawdust, reeking of testosterone. And well, Dolores is only human. Nine months later, and here we are. But as for the dresser project, that one began with a three-quarter inch sheet of walnut plywood. I started out in the driveway making my initial cuts with my track saw, just to get the pieces to a size small enough that I could handle them with my table saw. Once I had them there, I roughed out five pieces in total. A top, a bottom, two sides, and a vertical partition. And I made sure to leave them all a little bit oversized at this point. Next, I ripped a few thin strips of walnut from some offcuts from older projects that I had lying around, and then used them to cover the edges of the five aforementioned pieces. Once those were dry, I could bevel one side of each of the pieces. Then I used that cut to measure and mark the opposite end so that I could bring each piece to the exact dimension that I was looking for. With all the pieces cut to size, I marked out and cut in some dominoes to help reinforce everything. I also cut a rabbit into the four exterior pieces, making a non-through cross cut along each of their backs, and then by turning them on edge and making another pass to clear out all of the material. Next, I installed my dominoes and then glued my pieces together in two stages. First by attaching the two sides to the bottom, and then by attaching the top to the two sides. Whenever possible, I like to break my gluing up into as many separate parts as possible. Honestly, it just makes the whole situation a lot less tense, and it's a really cheap method of effectively doubling your clamps. Anyhow, once that had dried a bit, I went about installing the vertical partition. First I marked out and cut a piece to size where I knew it would be slightly too long. Then I held the piece up to the opening and struck a line so that I could finalize things with one more pass. And then I glued it in. Whenever possible, avoid tape measures and cut things by referencing where they need to go. In this case you could actually make a cut that was way off and you'd still be able to get it in, but you'd end up with a cabinet that was either concave or convex along the top or bottom but by referencing the interior of the side, you have the best chance at a perfectly flat top and bottom. Next, I made four drawer boxes out of half inch and quarter inch Baltic birch. I've done this plenty of times on camera and I have a whole video that goes over it in detail, so I'll just kind of skim past this and onto installing the drawer boxes. I know there's a few way that people like to do this, but I like to install the mill part of the hardware pretty much in the center of the box. Then I determine how high in the cabinet each of the female parts of the hardware should be, usually by referencing a drawing that I've made. And then I take a piece of scrap plywood, cut it to the appropriate size so that the hardware can rest on it while I'm installing it, and I mount the top slides on either side, then cut down the plywood and move down to the next one and just kind of keep going back and forth working my way down until I have the whole thing in. And once that's done, then you can put the male part in the female part. Hashtag making babies. Later that night, I took a piece of four-quarter walnut hardwood and cut off a chunk that I could use for two drawer faces. Here I'm just roughing them out, and then I set a stop block and cross-cut them to the exact length that I would need. And then next I cut them to their final width by ripping them. After that, I could install them and make sure that they were spaced evenly by using these little equal-sized off-cuts that I have laying around. And then I secured them to the boxes with a few screws from the inside.
By that time, it was getting pretty late, so the last thing I did before calling it a night was I took a couple pieces of walnut and laminated them together to make this big chunk that's just a little bit thicker than two inches, which is the finished thickness that I'm going to need for the base pieces in a couple minutes. We'll come back to that, though. The next day on my way home from work, I stopped by and picked up a couple of two-by-four-foot pieces of MDF and some paint. I'm going to use these for the top two drawer faces and the door. So after I'd cut the three of those pieces to their finished dimensions, I mounted the drawer faces the same way that I did the hardwood ones a minute ago, and then I used my drill press to mortise out some cups for the hinge hardware. Once those were installed, I attached their accompanying clips to the inside of the cabinet and we were good to go. The only sort of tricky thing here is that I designed this cabinet in a way where the door and drawer faces are inset from the exterior pieces by about three quarters of an inch, but flush with the vertical partition. This doesn't really make anything more difficult, there's just a little extra measuring to account for. Anyhow, once everything was done, I started working on the paint. I'd say it's actually pretty easy, and the outcome with MDF as opposed to hardwood or plywood is a definite improvement. But that said, it is a little laborious. Basically, you're going to have to prime at least once, sand, paint, sand, paint, and that's at the minimum if you want a good result. But while I'm doing that, I'd like to tell you about something that isn't laborious, and that's creating beautiful websites with Squarespace. No, but seriously. They really do make it simple to create slick-looking sites. And the great thing is that no matter what kind of site you're looking for, a personal portfolio site, something for a small business like a restaurant or an online store, they've got tons of templates to choose from. So they'll have something that's perfect for you. Did you guys know I host a podcast? Well, I do. And in addition to using Squarespace for my Four Eyes Furniture page, I also use it for the podcast. A couple weeks ago, I actually updated our site and have made it a priority to keep at it as we put out new episodes each week. And that's actually the thing that I personally love most about Squarespace. It just makes it dead simple to update things. I log in, stroke the keys here, click the mouse there, hit save, and that's it. Within seconds, it's live for the rest of the world to see. So if you're looking for a website, or even if you have an existing one, do yourself a favor and check out Squarespace. I've been using them for a little bit over a year now, and I'm honestly really glad that I made the switch. So start your free trial today at squarespace.com slash four eyes, and enter offer code 4 eyes to get 10% off of your first purchase. I'll throw a link in the description, so check it out. All right, thanks, Squarespace. The next weekend after I had joined and planed my base chunks of walnut down to two inches thick, I used a table saw to rip a two inch wide strip. So that left me with a two inch by two inch by however long piece that I could get my four legs from. Each of the legs is gonna need to be six inches long, so I set up a stop lock on my crosscut sled and cut those out. So here I'm trying a new style of leg that I've never made before. I'm not sure if you'd consider this a cabriole style leg, because I don't know if that refers to the style of the leg itself, as in the aesthetic, or if it refers to the technique that was used to cut it. But either way, this is basically just a super minimalist version of that. Once I had all of my angles marked up on the piece, I headed over to the bandsaw and cut them out. Then I took the off cut and taped it back on, rotated the whole thing a quarter of a turn, and made the same marks and cut it out again. And doing that will leave you with a piece shaped like this, with tapers on the two inside faces. 
So once I was sure that it had worked out, I did the same thing to the other three legs. And this is where I realized that I was stupid and that the easier way to do this would have been to make a thin, essentially 2D template that I could use to trace my cut lines onto the piece rather than measuring them out each time. So with the legs down, I cut out my four stretcher pieces. Nothing really worth explaining here. Basically, I just had to match the size of the inside square face that I had left on the top of the legs so that they'd mate cleanly. Then before I glued anything together, I put this little eighth inch wide gap along the top outside edges of the legs and the stretchers. It's such a little thing, but it has a huge impact on the finished look of the piece. At least for me anyway. When we had our first son, almost five years ago, people kept asking me if I was going to build a crib for him. And I really considered doing it. I remember coming up with a few ideas and drawings before ultimately deciding against it and opting to build him a dresser instead. So it only seemed fitting that I build another dresser for our next son, who hasn't been born at the time that I'm saying this, but should be by the time you're hearing it. And I'm still happy with that choice. I mean, cribs are cool, and honestly probably better from a sentimental or storytelling perspective, but you can only use them for so long. And that's where the pragmatic side of me takes over. Because this dresser, he'll use from the first day that we bring him home. And he'll use it when he's a toddler, and when he's a teen. And no matter where he goes in life, or who he becomes, this dresser can always have a home. Even if it is in the North Pole. Special thanks to Joel Irwin, Andre, Micah Nielsen, Aki Mitsu Sadoi, Michael Montgomery, and the rest of my Patreon members for making these videos possible. As you guys hopefully picked up on on this video, we just had our second kid. And after a lot of thought and many conversations, we came to the conclusion that now would be a good time for my wife, Dolores, to leave her job. And despite the stress that came with it, she really did love her job and it wasn't an easy decision. But one thing that did actually make it a little bit easier was knowing that we had some consistent income through Patreon that we could count on from month to month. And I'm not saying that to urge you to give if it's not right for you. I'm saying it so that the people who do support me know just how much it means to me, Dolores, and our family. So thank you. Truly. And if it is right for you, there's a link in the description. So check it out. And as always, no pressure. All right. See you next time.